You know, you're the best designer around, but no one knows your name and you're not getting hired. How is this possible? I know this problem very well. I started off in the very beginning of my career as a terrible marketer. So you may be a great designer, but a bad marketer. And today, I'm gonna help you fix that. Yo, what's up my fellow creatives? Adrian Boisel here. In today's video, this is something super important that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. And I've talked about this in some other ways, but I wanted to be really direct and have an honest conversation with you about something that's probably a big challenge for you. And it's been a challenge for me at the beginning of my career in doing marketing and doing branding and doing design. And this is an area that you need to level up in. And this is where we need to have this deep conversation about this. So I'm gonna help you do that today. No matter how good of a designer you are, if you don't know how to market yourself, you will never make great money. When I started as a creative, I was not a very good designer. And this is really the case for most people. And I do think there are some exceptions if you're not one of those normal people, maybe you're a prodigy, but being a highly skilled creative takes time, at least for us normal folks. We have to practice, we have to study, we have to put in a lot of hours, thousands of hours to be great at design. Over the years, I've not just become a better designer, but a highly skilled marketer. And one secret that I wanna share with you that I've learned the hard way, and I'll just tell you right up front, is the person that invests the most to get customers wins. So today, I'm gonna to jump into this, and we're gonna go into the three categories. The first category I wanna talk about here, and the first point I wanna make, is you need to have three pieces to understanding this part of your business. Your niche, your problems, and your solutions. What industry are you in? You need to really take this to heart. You need to take this seriously. If you have a pen and paper, you'll be able to remember this a lot better. This will serve you a lot better. But what will drive them in the door? Are you in a, working with contractors? Are you working with carpet cleaners? There's a big difference. Understanding what niche you're in and who your target customer is, who your ideal avatar, your dream client is, is very, very important. The second piece to this is knowing what do they need? Is it business cards? Is it marketing? Is it a website? Is it vehicle graphics? You need to understand, are they driving traffic? Do they get traffic? Are they getting leads? There's so many areas in a business that you can help with as a creative. This is what I want you to focus on, is what is their problem and what is their need? You need to write this thing down. The next piece to this is how do you solve the problem? What is different about your process? A lot of people struggle with this. They don't talk about their processes and what they go through. They only show the top iceberg of what the client knows about the industry, is they know that they can go get a design done and it should be done in five minutes, right? That's not the truth. There's research involved, there's planning, there's strategy, there's all kinds of, there's sketches, there's mock-ups, there's communication. There's all types of components to doing these projects for these clients that they're not seeing. It's like an iceberg. You have just what the client sees and then really what's happening all below. That's where you can build your value. And there are really three areas that I sell myself in, but you can only pick two when it comes to selling a client. So let me just give these to you real quick. The first one is speed. You might be somebody that is very fast at design and you wanna use that to your advantage and put that into your marketing and tell people, hey, I'm very quick. I can knock this out for you today, tomorrow. You know, that's why I came up with the name Instagraphics. I've always been very quick about design when I'm doing design. The second thing is quality. You can only pick two. Remember, quality is extremely important. I'm a high level designer and I didn't always used to be. In the beginning, my quality wasn't as great, so I didn't charge as much. But as I've gotten better, I've been able to pretty much ask any price that I want for my design work. The higher the quality, usually the higher the price that you can ask for. And then the third piece is price. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more competitive in the beginning when you're building your portfolio and really trying to get your name out there. And then when you start building a reputation, you start winning awards, you start doing the things that you really have set out to do and achieving some big goals and having some big wins, then you can start to raise your price. So speed, quality, and price. These are the things that your customers need to know about. These are the things that they're gonna be looking for. And you need to ask them which two of these three are most important to you, speed, quality, or price. These are great questions to ask your clients. I almost forgot to mention, if you get stuck anywhere through this video and you have a question, I have a community of people just like you who are leveling up their health, their wealth, their relationships in a private community and we're here to help you, to support you. You can ask your questions in that community and you will have multiple people, multiple creatives, multiple award winning people to support you with any of your questions or any challenges when you get stuck. It's called the Instagraphics Pro Network. It's completely free. And all you gotta do is click the link down in the description to join us and be sure not to skip any of those questions when you apply or we can't approve your application. All right, so let's get to the second part of this and this is really important. I want you to understand what graphic design is and what category that falls into. Graphic design is wealth and a lot of people are struggling. They're not making enough wealth and so they're looking for more marketing and maybe they're happy 
with what they're doing, but they want more. So there's either two types of people. There's people that are already making lots of money and they wanna make more money, or there's people that are struggling and they're not making enough money and they're frustrated and they're usually making decisions from a place of emotion, which a lot of our decisions are made from emotion, but when you're making great decisions, you're making them from logic and from ethics. Emotion should come last. So it's really important that you understand that design falls into the wealth category. There are only three categories that every business falls into, health, wealth, and relationships. Graphic design happens to be a tool that helps you gain more wealth. It is a marketing tool. So you have wealth, marketing, and then inside of that you have graphic design. And you can even break down graphic design into a smaller category. So knowing what area your business falls into and the types of problems that you're solving is gonna connect back to wealth, whether you're a graphic designer, web designer, or a motion designer. The smaller the problem you solve for a business, the less you get paid. It's like also selling a logo package versus a branding package. I can't sell a logo for probably more than 500 to 1,000 bucks, even at the highly skilled level that I'm at just for a basic logo design, and that would be one concept, versus a branding package is gonna be a minimum of $5,000. The amount of time that it takes for the logo design versus the branding package isn't really a huge difference, but the amount of money that I make per hour is absolutely huge, and we're gonna talk about that in another video, so stick with me. Something else I want you to consider is they want to make more money so they can reach more people. The goal of marketing is to reach more people. The more money you make, the more money you can spend on marketing. You wanna take a certain percentage of what you're doing in sales and kick that to your marketing. If you don't have at least a 10% marketing budget as a graphic designer, you're only hurting yourself. The important thing to think about when it comes to money is money solves problems. There's almost no problem that money can't solve, but you wanna start thinking about how you can solve bigger problems. Now that I'm solving bigger problems like building funnels and building marketing campaigns and building brands and helping companies really reposition their brand and clarify their brand, I'm starting to solve bigger problems and making more money per client. The next thing you need to know is you need to sell the outcome and not the service, and that starts by asking good questions. You can ask your, your client questions like, what is your goal for this project? What would a good outcome look like for you? What would a win look like for you if we were to do this? What are the important things that you're looking for? Again, is it you need to get this done fast? Is it you have the highest quality project? Or are you just trying to do this on a budget? What is most important to you? And asking good questions, you will be able to solve a lot bigger problems. The last piece of this is you need to invest money on marketing just like you're expecting your clients to do. How can you expect your clients to spend money on marketing when you're not spending money on marketing? You should be doing SEO, you should be promoting your stuff on social, you should be making videos, you should be investing time, energy, and effort into your own marketing just like you're doing for your clients. You need to practice what you preach. This is something that I was really bad at because I spent so much time working on behalf of my clients. I didn't spend enough time working on my business and my brand and my marketing and my business suffered because of that and I had these ups and downs of my revenue. Now that we've been able to be consistent about our marketing, we've had more consistent flow of deals and that has really changed our business. So I wanna know down below, what type of marketing are you doing currently for your business? And if you're not, are you gonna start and say, I'm getting started down in the comments below, drop a comment, I'd love to hear from you on that. All right, so we're at the last piece of this and this is really important, so make sure you're tuning in, make sure you're listening. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations. If you're a great designer, like I said in the beginning, your good work and your great work speaks for itself. It sells itself, you don't have to sell it. All you need to do is show it off. And so I want you to be what I call a social show off. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube is best because you can document your entire process that you went through from getting the client, your initial onboarding meeting, which you could record and get a clip of that, all the way to your first sketches, to the research you did, and show that whole iceberg, show the value, and you can even turn that into what we call a pre-selling mechanism that allows you to pre-sell clients before they even get on the phone with you. And this is kind of the big aha moment that I wanted to give you guys in this video, is if you do this the right way and you have good quality work, it will sell itself. You just need to present and document and show them how you created this great work. I really think documenting your design process is really, really important, not just for your own showing off, but for your own scalability, be able to train other people on your team, be able to grow your company, to be able to add more people to your team. Video and written documentation is one of the secrets that I've used to help grow my business. I am not a great implementer, so I have brought people onto my team that are great implementers and they have helped me really fine tune. I've done a lot of the videos and a lot of the written documentation, but they're helping me organize and implement these things 
into the business now that I've come up with the visionary stuff. So this is something you should be thinking about as two is documenting your entire process from start to finish. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to be consistent in your brand messaging. This is something that I see a lot of people make mistakes in. and I used to make those mistakes until my brother called me out. Sometimes if you're desperate for work, for work, you'll put out a promotion on your Facebook page and say, hey, I'm offering a deal on logo designs, or I'm offering a deal on websites, or I'm offering a deal just to try to get some work in. What that does is that attracts flies. It doesn't attract fish or the big things that you want. It doesn't attract the dream clients that you want. It attracts the bottom feeders, the people that are really not gonna give you an easy time. They're gonna be pains in the butt. You don't really wanna attract those types of people just by putting out a price offer or a discount. And that's not consistent. If you are a high quality designer, you need to be putting out high quality content, educating your clients rather than saying, I'll just do this for a discount. I know you want more work, but there's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. So just be consistent in your branding. If you are a price strategy business and you're trying to go for volume and you're not trying to go for a high ticket, then do that and be consistent about that. Put out daily deals, put out offers, put out packages, right? This is something that's gonna help you out a lot. The last piece that I want you to know, and this is something I see a lot of designers make, a lot of creatives make in general when it goes to marketing their business, is their calls to action. The stats don't lie. When it comes to calls to action, seven out of 10 businesses don't have a call to action on their website. You are one of those seven to 10 businesses probably. So if you don't have a strong call to action other than just call now, free consultation, those aren't great calls to action. You need to offer value. So one consistent call to action that drives them through an experience, drives them through what I like to call a sales funnel. If you don't have that, this is something I can help you with. If you're stuck at any point in this video, I would like to help you. If you would like my help, whether it's getting refining your niche, crafting your offer, making an irresistible offer, or just developing a proven marketing strategy, I'm available to work with you either one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. All you gotta do is go to my brand new website, adrianboysell.com, check it out. You can fill out the form. I'd be happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Anything you need, I'm here for you. That's why I do these videos for free, is to share some of this knowledge to give you a foundation so that when you're ready, you'll come to me and say, hey, I really wanna implement this and I'm struggling. This is what this is all about. This is iron sharpens iron type of situation. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Adrian Boysell. I'll see you guys on the next video. And until then, keep looking up.